Hello YouTubers. I have been a pretty extreme Boba Fett collector for probably close to 20 years now. And one of the things I have searched for on YouTube are other reviews of Sideshow's life-size Boba Fett. And thus far, I haven't been able to find anything other than uh, promotional material. So, as a proud owner of it, I figured I would do the community a favor and show everybody exactly what he looks like. So I've had mine since the initial release back in 2015. So actually mine had the very strange long neck that was associated with the initial release. Um, recently, I had somebody cut about an inch off of the pole that sits inside of the helmet that connects it to the rest of the mannequin. And that really did help it a lot. Uh, still probably could come down a little bit, but I don't want to, I don't want to take too, too much off and regret it. Um, I have also painted a couple things that kind of irked me. For instance, on this right gauntlet here, the four little uh, darts, uh, I painted the black and the red. <clears throat> and then also the other major alteration that I made was to the rangefinder. Uh, the regular release is just a big black chunk of plastic. It looks pretty terrible. And it's something that I always found uh, just really distracting since this part over here is supposed to be kind of a transparent and it's supposed to have LEDs up top. So I just kind of matched the colors as best as I could and it ended up looking pretty decent. And I have a fun little trick where inside, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but it's supposed to be a screen. So I masked off the whole interior screen and just sprayed it with a healthy coat of um, gloss finish spray paint, the sealer. So uh, it gives it sort of a nice reflective quality. So it looks like an actual screen inside. But other than that, he remains untouched. So he stands about six and a half feet tall and includes the lit base and has some pretty nice detail. Overall, I really, really love it. It's certainly one of the centerpieces to my collection. Uh, it's not perfect though. There certainly are some funky components to it. Um, people who are really into Boba Fett will nitpick some of the details. For instance, this is the Return of the Jedi Mythosaur. Uh, also, this chest emblem here is not accurate to the film. This is sort of the mass merchandise one that you see on virtually everything. Uh, other little critiques would include some of the damage, like up, up here, where it just looks sort of wonky. So it looks like it was kind of just painted on, uh, almost with a silver sharpie. Whereas the damage up here is a little bit more accurate and has more of a shape to it. But, yeah. Those are, those are pretty minor gripes, and I like a lot of the details that were included. For instance, he has the third belt over here, which is supposed to connect back to the jetpack. Um, also, regarding the jetpack, he has the straps connecting the jetpack to what should be underneath the harness. Uh, yeah. The gun is separate, it's a separate piece, and it sits inside. The thumbs are actually removable, which is how you get the blaster on there. So you take the two thumbs off, this one comes off like that, and it allows you just to kind of slip the blaster inside. The details on it, molded into the, the armor pieces, are, I think, really nicely done. Uh, they're all very sharp. You can see here the left gauntlet and the rock, the flamethrower detail, which looks pretty good. And you have the dental expander here, which again is molded in, but is pretty sharp and nicely detailed. 
Most of the paint application on it is pretty good too. Get all the, the weathering here on the armor. And also it's nice that you have the color differentiation between the right shoulder bell and the left. So this one is actually a little bit darker. Just like here on the armor, this the right armor piece is actually a little bit grayer compared to the rest of the armor. And you may not really be able to tell in this lighting, but it is. And it's one of those subtle details that just really helps to sell the overall piece. Uh, another critique that I do have of it is the overall size of the helmet. It feels a little bit undersized, but it, it doesn't feel as bad since lowering it. Before it just felt way too small, like his head wouldn't fit inside. But I think part of it is just sort of a, a trick of the perspective, the way the helmet angles up a little bit. So when it was so high up, you couldn't see any of this angle. So it just made it feel a lot smaller. And that's it. So if anybody has any questions, wants to see anything else, any comments or feedback, I'd love to take a look at them. Thanks for watching.